Hey team besties, I hope you are all tickety boo in your part of the world. This week I have an inside HGDC vlog sharing a lot of the day to day life for me as a stay at home mama and crochet designer. This particular week Brad was also home so grab yourself a project and settle in for a whole lot of wholesome family time, toddler adventures, a little bit of DIY and of course plenty of granny square action. So right now you're joining me in our car. We've headed out for a walk but I'm so cold that I keep returning to the car to warm up a little bit. We've had a lovely time playing football and exploring the area that we visited but I don't actually have any YouTube appropriate footage of where we are so each time I get out of the car I've inserted some of our other adventures from this week instead. My outfit today is not weather appropriate and I've wrapped Teddy's blanket over my knees. I'm so cold. My outfit's so cute though. I want to take my basket of crochet and a great big body sleeping bag and just go sit in the field and watch them play. <laughs> Yeah, we've had a scorch of a heat wave for like three days and then today is a normal temperature and I'm freezing cold, probably compounded by the fact that I am tired. Want to see my project? I don't know where I can prop you up. Also, there's like a horse box here and some people just casually riding their horses. It's so quaint. Daddy! Very cool. Actually, Mama's pretty cool because she's freezing. Oh, sit back, relaxing, Max, and all cool. I'm sure I can hear my baby, so I've got to go find them. Teddy, they're coming! Turn your car on, everything will be blinking and moving. And yep. stop trying to tease my thing. <laughs> I get asked quite a lot about how I get so much crochet done, and the answer, quite basically, is that I take it almost everywhere with me. If I have five minutes, I'll make a granny square or I'll do a few rows or whatever I can. And across the day and the week, that really does add up. And it does help that I can crochet granny squares without even looking. Teddy, Teddy cool. Teddy, Teddy cool. You sing it. Teddy, Teddy cool. Here, 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 deep, here, yeah, deeper, here, yeah, yeah, big, yeah, quiet, here, yeah. louder, here, yeah. here, yeah. 
Last little bit, and I'm gonna go find my boys. I now, I now have all of the pieces for this bag, uh, and I can start assembling it. Chilling in my hammock. Should have bought my crochet. Teddy, where are you? Mommy, where are you? <laughs> Come find me. I am so pleased with how this has turned out. About a year ago, I had the idea to take out two cupboards that were here that we basically filled with junk. And then Thursday night, I was like, I'm gonna do it. So Friday afternoon, I did. And before, Albie's huge crate was just here. And then the table was shunted all the way over here and it meant that we could only get two chairs in. Uh, yeah, I was just sick of not being able to have a family meal. Um, our new thing is that Teddy likes to read whilst we are eating. Teddy loves, 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 loves to sit and read whilst we're eating. So it's become a thing now that whilst we have our food, we read him a story or stories. But anyway, we eat at the table now and I love it because all three of us can get around the table and we still have space for Albie's crate. We had hoped that at Albie's age, he wouldn't need his crate, but he still definitely needs it. Just as much so he has a space away from Teddy more than anything else to be honest so that we know that there's somewhere to put him but it takes up a huge chunk of our kitchen so yeah we sacrificed two cupboards that we didn't really use so that Albie's crate has a space and that as a family we have somewhere to sit prior to this it was a dumping ground all of the time so I'd always come in and I'd dump the laundry on here and it would sit here for days. And so I now as part of my like evening close down of the kitchen, I clear the table off and it's only been a few days, but so far really, really pleased with it. Don't you love it when a DIY project comes together? Anywho, now we've moved Albie's crate, we can access the kitchen table so much more, which means precious painting and crafty time with my baby. Thank you. This kitchen glow up has been on the list for such a long time and it feels so great to make a start. As and when I get started on the next main project, I'll share it with you. And eventually this space will be cute and super functional. Next up is to paint the cabinets and look at all the color choices. Project updates. Earlier in the vlog, I was showing you these panels and I've now actually put them together. <sighs> I have like this running joke with Brad that when I'm making a bag, it comes out bigger than I intended. I like my bags quite cute and quite small. And this, my friends, is quite big, like head for comparison. <laughs> um, 
but also my days of walking around with a tiny cute little bag are done like I need to be able to put a fair amount of stuff in so yeah hopefully when it's put together it's still going to look good but I'm not going to lie the size of it has decreased my motivation to finish it but I had to finish the panels finish the lining put them together graft the granny squares on there isn't a whole lot left of that so maybe I'll just jump in and do it I don't think any of you watch this but if you are watching this I am about to show Carter's baby blanket so please look away pause it and come back in like I don't know five minutes or something just so you don't get any spoilers okay oh my goodness me <laughs> It looks very plain when I hold it up like this. What do you think? It was so busy before and I was just worried. I said, I felt as if it was like ugly granny rather than beige mum aesthetic. And I've seen baby carter's outfits and like how beige everything is and yeah just wasn't feeling it so i've gone with this every single square is in the joining color which is like a huge unusual move for me so basically i have made every single granny square in the same color that i've joined it in And then there are 12 squares, there will be in total, 12 squares that have a different center, different colored center. So you can see the brown, the cream, there's the baby blue, and then there is the grage, here it is, the beige gray color that is a little bit tougher to see. Um, there's 13 rows because this is my arrival pattern, which we will come back to. There's 13 rows of squares and on one of the rows um, it's going to be row 10. I'm not going to put any colour because I'm going to put the baby's name and then um, all of the other 12 have got a square, a square per row with a splash of colour and because I've spaced them all out it does look like I've thrown it together but of course I've not I've like agonized over it like I always do like you have to curate it when you throw it together it just doesn't look right so this is where I'm at I think I have done one two three four five oh one two three four five six seven eight rows I've got enough to put most of the ninth row on and then I have just cracked into another ball of yarn I need to make another five rows minus five. So I need to make another 50 squares and then do the border. And the border, I am going to do my usual signature border and I'm gonna bring in all of these colors in like quite big blocks. And yeah, it just looks really good in my head. And so far, it's coming together really well as well. I had to put this project in time out for two, three weeks because I was quite mad at it. <laughs> I've in effect made this blanket twice now because I did all of the squares. I tried to put it together. The grannies weren't grannying, you know, it just wasn't. So I made a decision that I wasn't going to gift it because I wasn't happy with it and that hopefully this is something that will be kept for a long time and I want it to be really really nice. I've hit a load of my deadline stuff as I've already told you. I've called for testers and all of that on my time sensitive projects so I really want to just get this done now because the baby is well over a month old and I just want to get it done and gifted. 
But because of how much yarn I've used making the blanket twice, I might not end up making the cardigan because I'm not sure there's going to be enough yarn there. But we'll see at the end. It is actually my arrival blanket pattern and I just so happen to have that here. So this is my arrival blanket. It is so cute. Mm -hmm. This one smells like my baby. I made this one when I was expecting Teddy. Um, which was over two years ago now. And of course I went with all the color, made it mismatching, but perfectly curated, of course. And after I'd had him, I also, or no, before, whilst I was pregnant, a combination. I made Teddy's and then I made one for Cove, I made one for Ophelia and I made one for Nova and I've made one for Goldie and now I'm making one for Carter. So Teddy and Carter are cousins and then Ophelia, Nova and Goldie are Carter's cousins on like his mum's side of the family. Cove is one of my um, mum friends that also had high premises when I was pregnant with Teddy. So I was just, I've just really shared out the arrival love. And so far, every single one has been an absolute joy of colour. And then enter my beige mum aesthetic. But look at what colour combinations can do. Same blanket, but yeah. So that's my project updates. And today, Monday the 8th of July, I've posted on Instagram for the first time in almost four months. Okay team, so what do you think to Carter's blanket so far? Do you prefer this version from this vlog or the previous version that I frogged? Right team besties, this is where you'll find me at the end of most of the days. The light in this room is magical at this time, as is a spot of crochet on the sofa. So that's a week in my life, a week inside HGDC. I really hope you've enjoyed watching and I'll see you soon in the next one. Take care.